Welcome to Beyond the 90, our usual weekly podcast. Got Neil with me. Get a good week, Neil. Yeah, it's good as it can be, mate, but yeah, not too bad yourself. Yeah, not too bad. Ant's there as well, in his car as usual. <laughs> it's my new recording spot, isn't it? You live in that <laughs> car? Uh, I wouldn't quite say live, but I spend too much time in here. Corona's hit Ant hard. <laughs> <laughs> we might have to start a GoFundMe page for Ant's house. <laughs> Links will be in the description. You want to upgrade to a seven-seater? <laughs> Uh, so this week we're going to talk about transfers and a bit around when we get to go back into the KP. Start with transfers. So this week we saw, I don't know if it's paper talk or not, so Young Chu, Barcelona put a bid in for 40 million. What are your guys' views on that? And you want to go? 40 million. That's going to buy like his left foot. Where's the rest of it coming? Right. <laughs> the fact we sold Maguire for 80 million. Yes, I know United's desperate, but for Young Chu, because he's a lot younger, I know he doesn't have like the English side and stuff. But I think we should be looking to at least match right if, he, if we're going to move on because there's a lot more long-term in terms of Siunchu than we had with Maguire. So, and I think uh, Siunchu had a better season last season than Maguire ever had for us. So it should, we should be looking at 80 million minimum if we're going to sell him. And I don't want to be selling him. I don't want to be selling him at all, to be honest. I, I think personally... 40 million is a bit on the low side. I'd probably say 60 to 80. He's not won anything. Um, I've, I've not really seen him play without Evans. I think Evans controls that back four. I'd be interested to see him with like a Benkovic and see how good he really is. Um, I've seen a, a few Leicester fans saying, did he cost us Champions League with that kick out? Banned for the last three games. If you're saying he's an 80 million pound defender, then probably yes. But yeah, I think I you make a good point. Um, but the issue is as well is just with our slow back line, you saw with Evans and um, Mor- uh, Morgan jumping in on that on, on Martial for that penalty. That That's what happens when you haven't got the pace in the back line. But overall, I think 40 mil, we're, we're taking the piss. Our people know, Leicester fans know, Leicester owners know how to sell a player and they know the value they want for him. It's, at the moment, he's our standout kind of centre-back with you were saying, I think last time that Johnny Evans is aging, Morgan's definitely aging, Ryan Bennett looks like he's not coming back. Siuncu is the player the person's going to slot straight back in. He knows what he's doing in that position. So to lose him for that amount of money, when we haven't really got a backup with Benkovic doing okay on loan, it'll be a really bad idea to really sell him on. Yeah. So I can't see it happening, not for 40 mil. So I think at least 60, but we could. With Barcelona looking at him, I, I just can't see him going just yet. I think he's quite happy at Leicester in the position he's playing at the moment with Europa League football potentially coming up. I think he'll, he's more happy to stay, but we'll, we'll have to see. But I, I can't see him going this summer. No, nor can I. Um, I think personally, if I was him, if Barca comes knocking, you have to think, wow, probably one of the best teams in the world once me. I can turn heads. But I don't think he'll go. I think I'm with the Union and I don't think he'll go anywhere. I personally think we went in with a ridiculous offer of 50 million for Trincao. And, and I think personally, they came back and said, all right, then we'll go with a ridiculous offer. Their president's already come back and said, if you don't meet, match the release clause, he's not for sale. And his release clause is 500 million. No team in the world's ever going to pay. Um, and Barcelona put release clauses in there to stop PSG buying their players. That's the only reason they did it. Um, but I think on that rumour, would he be good here? I think the best we can do is get him on loan. Um, he's never going to get in the team. He's got Griezmann on one side and Suarez on the other, so he's never going to get in that Barcelona team as long as them two are there. So I think he is one for the future for them, but I think if we could get him on loan for a year, that would be magnificent. What do you I think, think, think though, you're saying about release clauses, I, I think there's a rule in Spain that everyone's got to have a release clause. Yeah. They put it so high to to sort of avoid him being brought, as you say. But I do think if we got him on loan and sort of had an op- option to buy would be the best thing for us, but it's just how high that option would be. I think that's what they're trying to do at the moment, have the 50 mil release cause after the two years from what is to be believed, because this rumour isn't going away like a lot of them. So if we could do, I think that'd be a big statement from the club as well to bring in a player that we need in that position and we are linked with another, I think, defender as well from from, uh, from Barcelona. But 
the, the one that keeps sticking is that that one, uh, Tagiafico. Oh, I can't remember his name now. That that one that James was mentioning earlier. So it it it, it, it it's, feels like it's Mares but younger kind of thing. He's not very good at crossing in the ball, but he will still manage to pick out a player and actually beat a player and get in. But it will be, I think, if we do get him, it will be a hell of an achievement to it because that will put that will show the ambition of the owners. However, I'm not holding my hopes on it because, I mean, to go from Gray, Albrighton, and Barnes to then go into this Real Madrid starlet is it's such a big jump. It may be too soon. Potentially, if we get we can secure Champions League, like you were saying last time, James, for year after year after year, then he potentially would come. But you seem you've seen other players do a similar thing and get the, the um, Everton have done, for example, they've got players from Barcelona on loan and end up bringing them in. So it, it's not out of the possibility. I just can't really see it happening. I think with Barcelona, I think, I think they're okay with the loan. They just don't want this option to buy thing at the end because mm. talks, talks in Spain that this lad in the next two years be worth over a hundred million. So if they let him go on loan, they're not going to say, okay, you can buy him for 50 million when he's worth sky high prices. So I think we're, we're probably, if we do get him, it'll be the same as the Tillemans deal. Um, we'll get him on loan with no option to buy. I think because of Tillemans and sort of how well he played for us, that sort of bumped up his value when we tried to buy him. I think that's why we're so keen to try and get that option to buy. But I think as well, you've got to remember that there was... Tillemans wasn't, he was, unless I think his agents were looking at Tottenham and other teams and Man United to go to have that bigger option, but they didn't want to invest. So then he not ended up coming to Leicester because I think he did want to come, but his agent was looking at other clubs with bigger money, with bigger transfer fees as well. So I think that has a bit to play in it as well. Yeah, it's one of those, if we can get him, it'll be incredible, but it's looking unlikely. So, you know, when we bought um, Ian Astro and they, they had that release clause of like, oh, if we want, we can take him back for 35 odd or 40 mil. Do you think Barcelona might do something like that? They'll sell him to us, but they'll put a buyback, buyback clause in. Oh, well, if we want him, we can just take him back whenever. It's the logical thing for them to do if they were going to sell him. But because of how badly Barca Barcelona's run, it wouldn't surprise me if they didn't do it. I think personally... Let's pay 31 million for him in January. You're not going to flog him in the summer. That's a ridiculous mm. business. But I, I don't I don't think they'll flog him. I think he's worth too much to them. Um, yes, he's a great player, but he's it's, it's not played for Barcelona yet because he can't get into the team. Um, but he's never going to replace Messi, is there? No. no. Um, it's, it's something that we want these players that are sort of going to take us to the next level and stuff, but it's always going to be hard to then attract them to Leicester. Yeah, I think I think this lad from Barcelona is the same as the uh, is it Luka Jovic from Real Madrid who was supposed to be getting on loan. Um, but again, these loan deals come at a price. I think they offered him on loan, but we have to pay sixteen million pound up front. Jeez, if we're gonna if we're gonna pay these big loan fees, I'd rather us go and sign a player like Ismail Lasar or something to have for the future as instead of just one season. Because as good as a loan deal could be for one season, it is only one season and there's no longevity in it. So if there's not sort of a plan beyond that to sign him, I, I don't see sort of the purpose in it. Yeah, yeah. and just yeah, it's a good point. And you might as well invest in David Brooks and Saar and it'll cost you less money, give you more squad depth. And also, if there is an injury to it, I just think it's about potentially if there is an injury to him, then that player is gone. You're like, well, well, what then? You spent all this money on this amazing transfer and nothing comes of it if yeah, he gets injured. I think they do it because obviously they're top six clubs in Europe and they, they pay their players stupid amounts of wages, as we know, and they try and offset the wages against it because obviously they're not going to play for you. If we're not going to pay all his wages. They generally do it on a 50-50 basis. Yeah. And it's, it's one of the... The thing is, I'd love him at the club, but just I would... I don't want to say I'll be against having him on sort of a one-year loan deal, but it, in terms of sort of running a football club well, it doesn't seem make sense to do for us just to have him for one year. No, I think I think if you look back at different at transfer windows of the past, we seem to go in early on for a player like this on loan and never get them. It's, 
seems to me that it might be some, another ploy by the club as kind of smokescreen while they do their business. Mm. Because we it's never leak stuff like this. Um, mm. It's very rare this happens. Um, even the Tillemans transfer was late on. No one knew about him, then all of a sudden he was here. So it could be one of them. I, I personally think that Brooks will be here. Yeah, I think Brooks will, I I, think Brooks will be signing as well. Mm. So I, I, I personally think Brooks will be here. I mean, Europa football next year is not really going to attract anyone. Brooks will be looking for a Premier League club, one that he can thrive at. And if he came here, he would thrive. Um, so I think Saar Brooks, someone like that will be coming. I don't think this Barcelona lad will come at all. But also, even if we got the loan deal across the line and the money across the line, would he want to come? I don't know, because you'd think for him, it, he's just played at Braga, which is like a Euro, Europa League level club. You'd think he would want that sort of next step in his career to go and play at a Champions League club. So he, yeah. if he would be loaned out again, you'd think, probably think he would want to be loaned to a Champions, Champions League yeah. But would the next step be the Premier League? No, well, no, because he's a he's playing for him. The pinnacle is going to be getting in that Barcelona first team, so he'll probably be looking at playing sort of in one of the Spanish teams that have got into the Champions League, or even like Porto or Benfica. For me, I think that would be if I was him, that would be the next logical step. Well, like Atletico Madrid, something like that, yeah. Could be a good one. I don't know. I think Brooks is a good shout. I think the, the only issue is, is just because he had that big injury. I think that's why people aren't taking the risk to go for him. Just because he had that such a big injury at such a crucial time. Because he looked fantastic the season before. And I think, do you think this is where potentially we'll sneak up in the same way we did for Evans? Where he got relegated people got, and like Man City put in a bid for 30 metal. And then, and then they pulled out as soon as he got relegated. So similar thing, because we tend to pick up good players from the championship or good players from relegated teams, so like Maguire, Evans, from Madison as well. Um, James Justin looks like a really good buy as well. So I think our scouting team has the ability to to pick from these like young English talented players. And I think yeah, Brooks, Brooks could be one of them. Yeah. The thing you say about, I've, I've seen it a lot on Twitter and it annoys me, but sort of people turning their nose up at Brooks because he's been relegated. But when you look at, just not just at Leicester, but across the Premier League, some of the best players in the league have been relegated. When you look at like Andy Robertson from, from Liverpool, he got relegated with Hull. Wijnaldum got relegated at Newcastle. Maguire got relegated, what, like three times? Like There is absolute bargains to get from teams in the relegation zone. And it's just sort of picking up the right players. And even then, some of the players that are relegated are better than, I was having a conversation with somebody yesterday, better than the Newcastle players. Because Newcastle have a team, player for player, that's worse than a Bournemouth, for example. But just because they're not relegated, I wouldn't, I wouldn't just not buy them. It just depends on the quality of the player. Like Fraser is better than Matt Ritchie, or in, in that sense, even though one doesn't, one, if the things stay the way they are, one won't play in the Premier League and one will. And look at James Madison. He came to the Premier League and he hit the ground absolutely running. And it was, which was which was brilliant to see, but at the same time, it's like, oh well, he's won the championship, and I said it for a bit because I saw Anthony Knockart kind of didn't hit the same levels. But it it, it is one of those things where I'm not sure. I don't know what the expectation is growing year on year, which is better, but also it means that people are getting a bit ridiculous with things. Yeah, I think you're right. I think we're only buying even if you're buying, you're only buying one player. You're not buying eleven. You're not buying their whole team and replacing everyone. Mm-hmm. It's one player. And, and I think even if you put Vardy in that team, he's one player, would he have changed the way they played? Probably not. Would he have kept them up? Probably not. So you wouldn't have bought him, which is, of course you would, because it's ridiculous. I just think he's one player. And yes, he's been, same with Kampen off Nor- Norwich. He has been the outstanding one from Norwich. Um, and in times when they were down, he kind of pulled them back up a bit. Is that one player that would thrive? Yes, he's a, he's a big fish in a small pond there. To bring him here... Then he'll thrive on the players around him because it's generally good players. Their games get lifted when they're playing with good players. And also they've known each other. So I think one of the reasons why James Justin came here was because of obviously the, the recruitment and also because he knows a lot of the team and the values of the team, which is he's known like Hamza Chowdhury, um, Harvey Barnes, 
James Madison, Ben Chua, Damari Gray, he's seen them all in the under-23s, maybe not when he was there, but he knows, okay, they're trying to take them on to the next England level. And you've got a manager like Brendan Rodgers that's going to try and get the best out of you. I mean, with somebody like a Todd Cantwell, as you were saying, or David Brooks, they fit the, the profile of what we need brilliantly. Yeah, I think you're totally right. I think our scouts and the scout network seems to work quite well. Um, you see lots of players saying, we should buy this person, we should buy that person. But there, every single player in the world just wants to come to Leicester. Um, we know that's not true. Um, but I think the scouts, as you say, Neil, will go for someone like Brooks. Um, I can't see us spending 40, 50 million on someone. I don't, honestly don't think we've got the funds to do that. Maybe think, in a few years when I the transfer market increases and also we secure that Europa League, Premier League spot year in, year out, then you can afford to spend that much amount of money on a player. I think if we are going to spend big money, it will, it will mean that we've got to sell someone. Uh, if we keep everyone that we've got, I don't, I don't see us spending more than sort of 20 million on a player. I think, I think you're right. So, transfer-wise, this one's been popping on for a, seems like a year now. Chilwell. Um, <laughs> heard he wants to go. <laughs> Chelsea want him. Uh, we've said he's not for sale. Um, if I was in charge of the club, I don't want anybody here that doesn't want to be here. Mm. So I'd be negotiating it's, with Chelsea what the right price is. I, I don't think he's worth 80. I think he'll go for 55. I was watching a... I'll take the mick out of it a bit earlier, but you know the um, Chilwell compilations and stuff like that. I did watch one and from like 1920, and there wasn't a single moment from past uh, January of 2020. But just seeing how he played and the drop-off has been so different. The way that he used to get the ball and the confidence he had to move into the centre of the midfield and run at players and, and just take on players and have a couple of step-overs and try something. He just he hasn't looked that same way for ages. I've got a feeling that um, and I was when I was on a Chelsea podcast recently and they were talking about how Lampard and Andy Cole have both said, yeah, this guy is, is the future. So if they get the best out of it, we look like chumps. But again, if you, I agree with what you're saying. It's, it's his decision to down tools, essentially, and not play as exciting football as we know he can do. So he, he's, he's, he's got to work on his final board and stuff a, li a little bit more. But at the same time, it's, it, it's bound to happen, I think. This is just the one player every year that we had to get, that we like religiously get rid of. And it's just going to be too well this year. And the drop off from just seeing some of the highlights and the way he used to play when we were all really excited about this young Chilwell that used to have a pop-off at goal and cut, and cut in on the inside towards midfield and take players on and drive, I've not seen that in the last since since January, to be honest, at all. Uh, I think I think personally, and we've discussed this before, he was linked with Chelsea in January transfer window. I personally think that he'd already had talks with Chelsea in January. And since then, mm -hmm. his head's been properly turned and they said, look, we can't get you who will come in for you in the summer. Um, and I think he's just been treading water here. He's, he's not a bit at full tempo. He's not past some of the games. And he seems to have got worse and worse. Whereas, like you just said, Neil, last year, he looked amazing all the way through the year. So to me, it seems though his head's been turned with a, with a kind of, Chelsea, come to Chelsea, we'll put you on a big wage, we'll make you a permanent left back. Which is, which is fine and fair enough. Uh, well, it's not fair enough, but even if that was the case and we can accept that, he's had a drop-off, you want to perform against Chelsea at a really decent level if they want to buy you. you do you know what I mean? And, he's, and I don't believe in the games that we played in the FA Cup and the game that we played. I know he scored in the game again with the 2-2 draw at home, but I don't believe he played particularly well. And if this person's wanted to buy you, you want to put your best, fit, best foot forward. And I genuinely don't think he has. No, I think you're right. I think also sometimes players don't play as well to try and lower the value based on agents' discussions. That's happened in the past, but I think if he doesn't want to be here, then let's talk to Chelsea and get the best deal we can for him. I think with Chilwell, it was the best and worst thing that happened for us was him getting in the England squad when he dropped yeah. up and all the other big six players. I think that's when it really started to go, start to go downhill for him. I think you're right. I think also it'd be good to have him in the squad for next season because of the Europa rule around homegrown talent. I think you need four 
it might be four or six homegrown talent that's been with the club since they've been 15 or 19, but they have to be at the club at least two years. And obviously we put a lot of our youngsters out on loan, which we might do again next season. That could mean we could only play 22 people out of the 25 we're allowed. Um, so I think homegrown talent would probably need it. Do you think we'd recruit? So, so with the four, we'd probably bring in what Luke Thomas again, Hamza Chowdhury, Harvey Barnes, uh, and then the fourth one would be Ben Chilwell. If it's not Ben Chilwell, then who would, would we bring in like George Hurst? Because we're probably light in the strike force. Yeah, so it'd be that gamble. Do you bring a youngster in and put them in the squad? Or do you bring someone in that probably a bit older, not from England? Um, so I don't know, if I'm honest. Um, it's a difficult one. I'd probably bring Hurst in um, as kind of back the squad. Um, but you want to obviously utilise all the 25 players you can. So I think it's a tough one. But I think if you lose Chilwell, then that's another space gone. So I think on his day is a great defender, but he's not on his day in a long time for me. Going back to what you were saying about the squad and stuff, like, so what Man City did is they brought in someone like Scott Carson and stuff just to fill in that quota. Yeah. Which, like, if, if we did, if worse came to worse, we could end up having to do something like that. Yeah. So obviously, if you only name 23, an injury starts to hit you, you start to get a bit of stuff, don't you? Yeah. It's, it's this debate that we keep having about what we lack that the bigger clubs have is that squad depth. Yeah, which I think we've discussed before. Um, so other transfer hours, I think Michael's been living with United and Chelsea. Um, I, d- I can't see him going United if I'm honest. I don't think the hay is going anywhere. Um, but it, I think if United actually did come knocking, I think he'd jump at the chance. This is boy of club, it's his, who his dad played for. Um do you think is he? I think I disagree with you here. I know you want to say something. Yeah, he's always talked about coming out of his dad's shadow and stuff. Exactly. And then if he plays United, then that surely just puts him straight back in his dad's shadow. And like, surely he wants to sort of carve out his own. I know he's been brilliant throughout his time with us and stuff, but surely going to United just then makes him Schmeichel's son, uh, Peter Schmeichel's son again instead of Casper Schmeichel. It, yeah, it, and that's 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 the problem as well. I think you got to you got to remember that De Gea is twenty nine, um, and you bring in a thirty three year old. I think this is one of the things that's just made up by the media to as like a romance story of our oh, the son returns to the old club that his father used to play at. And the thing is, they've got Dean Henderson waiting. They've got um, they've got De Gea, which is like a, a really he's had a bit of a mess up, but he's still like a really really good keeper. You're not going to bring in Schmeichel, and also. As Ant was saying, he's lived in his father's... Imagine since you were five years old, you're going to be compared to your brother, your dad all the time, where it's like, oh, you're, you're um, uh, Peterson, you're Peterson, you're Peterson. And now in 2016, at this club, it was the first time where he was appreciated for his achievements and who he was. So when he won the league, obviously it was a, he, he knows how well the squad works. He knew the squad, how it worked, uh, how, how we played. But the issue is, it's it just doesn't seem logical at all because if that's the case, he's going to be sitting on the bench and from, from the way Schmeichel seems and how he acts and stuff, I think he's very happy at Leicester. I couldn't see him moving to uh, another, to a champions, to, to Man United to try and, and that that's to take on Schmeichel's shirt at number one in Manchester United is probably one of the biggest bird, not like a burden that you're going to see. So, he seems happy and settled here, and he's probably thinking about the longevity of his career, which is why he's probably got why he's got a contract for him and Vardy to see out their careers at this club. So I can't see it happening because it's it's too much it's too much to to fill. And if he had the opportunity, maybe when he first started, but that wasn't the case. So he came here, he's seen what we can do, and he sees the upward progression of us. And yeah, I think he's going to stay here for sure. I think. A lot of fans on Twitter said, oh, I wouldn't sell him until someone mentions what about Henderson and Cash? So I think Henderson's going to be a top goalkeeper. Yes, he's quite young. Um, I don't think he'll ever come here. Uh, I don't think we'll ever get rid of Schmeichel. But I think, when do we start looking towards the future? Because we've got Bardi and we've got Schmeichel, they're both. That is, when, when, when's the opportunity for us to start looking at the future and going, okay then, who do we need to bring in? 
to make the next three or four years great. Because I know that United have started to bring Greenwood through. Um, we started to bring youngsters through. So kind of, when do we start making that transition? Or do we keep going until they both fall over? The thing is, we've got some keepers coming through, haven't we? We've got the Daniel Iverson and stuff. who went out on loan last year. We did relatively well. But it's then the next step for him would be then to be on the bench, wouldn't it? and be the second choice and stuff. Because I really like Danny Ward as a keeper, but he's never going to be our number one, I don't think. I do see Iverson has the potential to be our number one in the long term. Yeah, uh, I've heard great things about him. Um, it's just getting that push towards that first team bench, like you say. Um, I think as long as Schmeichel's there, I don't see anybody else playing but him, no matter what he does in the game. Mm-hmm. I think, yeah. Yeah, I agree, to be honest. And going back to Iverson, I think the next step is either the bench or sending him out on loan to another sort of lower Premier League club. Because I don't think there's any point sending him back to the Championship or back to League One anymore. There's not sort of... He needs a progression and a step up if he's ever going to get towards the first team. Well, we did it with Barnes. We sent him to League One. Then we brought him to the Championship. Then we pulled him into the first team. And he's, he's still learning and progressing. And we're seeing... I mean, to get five, eight assists and five goals and stuff is still pretty good going. It's not what exactly what we need. We can see there's a quality player in there. And if he works on his finishing a lot more, he could have doubled that amount of goals quite easily, to be honest. Like, I'm thinking about the result again. I think Chelsea, when he had like an open goal that he missed uh, or like a one-on-one with the keeper that he put it wide, he's had a few opportunities. But with um, Iverson and that, we just need to kind of step them up to that next level. And I think we're getting there because... I think one thing that's kind of gone into the radar is how well our scouting system's been for our under 23s. Like they're challenging at the top of the Premier League, the under 23 table, which is really good going for us. So it shows you that this value system has gone all the way down the squad and to the lower levels, which is exciting because look, for example, when we ran out of left backs, we had to bring in Luke Thomas. Yes, he, for, he performed really well against some of the biggest teams in the Premier League. So I think when the opportunity comes, we're just going to have to recruit them from the under 23s. And we're seeing that with like Dewsbury Hall, for example, who's been sent to League One with Blackburn, uh, mm-hmm. both Blackpool. And then he's going to come back, probably go to the Championship, or we may utilize him in the uh, under, utilize him in the under 23s or um, in the first team in the Europa League. So it gives us, I'm, I'm happy with recruiting people from the under 23s. But for specifically for a replacement for Vardy and a replacement for Schmeichel, that's going to be the hard ones to come by. But I think we, the club have seen it after the 2016 season. They've realised that, right, this old school uh, mentality, the 4-4-2 needs dismantling. They got rid of the manager. They, they started to get rid of the right-back, left-back, uh, centre-back pairings, and they started to dismantle the team. So I trust the club enough to realise that Vardy's on his last leg. If Vardy's coming to the end of his career, and we're going to get him somebody in soon. And same with Schmeichel as well. I think... I think you made a lot of good points. The one thing I was going to say is sort of, you mentioned Barnes and stuff making, still, like he's had a good season, don't get me wrong, but he's still made a fair few mistakes. And I think the difference is on the wing, you can get away with that. But having that with sort of Iverson and the keeper would be a lot more sort of, would be a lot worse for us than having it with a winger. Yeah, I think, I think it depends what position you get as a striker, if you miss a few shots, not nothing gets the goalkeeper if you let three howlers in, confidence is shot and you're three nil down. Um, and that's probably the difference. I, I, I think with regards to Varda, uh, that young lad from Celtic is supposed to be coming. Will he come? Does he want to play second fiddle to Varda? That would be the decision. Is, is when you start, no one's going to want to come here and sit on the bench for games and games and games for a high price. They're going to want to hit the ground running and play football every week. Um, and then you've got Nacho as well. Um, if somebody else comes in that they're seeing as a Vardy replacement, he'll be thinking, I'm third choice now, what's the point of me being there? Um, so, so it's difficult. I just depends who we buy, if, if I'm honest. Um, I don't know what your guys' thoughts are with this left himself Celtic. He looks like a good player, but he's the wrong, wrong striker from the Scottish League for me. Oh, here we go. Go on. Don't <laughs> <laughs> play the Scottish League. Every, let's just tick off that from your uh, Beyond the 90 podcast bingo and mentioning, I forgot anything, Morello. Morello. I think he plays uh, the French League, don't he? Does, no, he? does he move to Lille? 
it's it's been linked and stuff, but I don't think it's a done deal yet. So there's still time for us to jump in. He's saying, still saying that in two years' time. There's still time for us to come in through. <laughs> no, I do think though, the, in terms of Edward and stuff, he looks a very very promising player. But he's playing in the Scottish League, which is what like equivalent of League One, sort of lower Championship. So it'll be an undoubted step up. You say that, but at the same time, they've bought. There's a lot of young. There's a lot of talent that's come from Celtic into Premier League that's actually taught, gone on to the next level. So you look at somebody like uh, who's the who's left back. I forgot his name now. That I've, we were linked I've, to with Chilwell. I've heard that yeah. Van Dijk uh, has gone on to do quite good things. Yeah, I think I think he's done all right for himself, hasn't he? Van Dijk's a good yeah good example. Um, the le- I can't remember the left back's name now. It's, it's absolutely escaped my mind. The Scottish left back that's gone to Arsenal. He played really well against us. Anyway, so there's been quite a few players that have come from Celtic down. Tierney, Tierney that's it. I had Torreira in my head, and I was like, "That's a wrong Arsenal player." Uh, but yeah, um, Tierney was a really good example, and there's, there's a couple more that escaped my mind as well. But they're all, they, that's their philosophy as well. We get a player, we train them up, they send them on to Premier League, and they go on to the next best things, and we charge them a lot of money for it. So. We're kind of doing the same thing there. But I think their scouting, that's the reason why Leicester's getting linked to Barcelona and stuff like that as well. It's because we have a decent squad and we have a prove that we take players and train them up to the next level. So I would trust him to come in, to come in behind that and guarantee us. But do I want to do it at the expense of Nacho? No. I think the point you're saying about a lot of players do come from Celtic and look very, very good. But at the same time, we sent Benkovic to Celtic and he looked like Prime Maldini up there. And then here, he's, he's like looking fairly average in the championship. So it's... Yeah, I think the, the, they started off that way. But I think in the championship, I think, uh, James, you were saying that the, the, the Bristol fans really like him. Yeah, the Bristol fans. The, the things that I saw on Twitter around Bristol fans saying, if they could, they'd want to buy him. Um, is exactly what they need. His ball control is great. He's been a great defender for them. Um, is Bristol City's level? I don't know. He'd, he'd obviously want to play here. Maybe this one year on loan's done him good. Maybe going to be the Unchura and Benkovic at the back with their pace. I don't know. I, I don't think Benkovic will stay fit for a whole season going on previous no. seasons, but I think it's a difficult one. The only issue is if you've not got that commanding centre-back You've got Siunchu, Evan, you've got Siunchu, Benkovic. Then if Chilwell's going, you've got Thomas. And with Ricardo out, you've got Justin. That's a very inexperienced back line. And that will, that will really kill us if, if, if that's the case as well with their positional movement and stuff like that. We saw with Norwich this year, they tried that and they got absolutely battered by it. Yeah, totally agree. Um, so moving forward... Um, obviously, coronavirus is still around. Um, start of the season is September the 10th, I think it is, around that date. Um, fixtures are supposed to be out August the 21st. Um, I can't see us being in the ground probably this side of Christmas. I don't mm-hmm. even think we'll be at full capacity this season. Um, and I've seen conversations around if when we do allow back into ground, we'll be allowed 13 to 25%. I'm not sure how that's done logistically because you've got the corporate area, they'll get first choice, and you've got season ticket holders, members. Season ticket holders will say, I deserve to go over different season ticket holders. Then they're going to be put in any part of the ground. Um, they're going to be sat in their own seats. So I think logistically, for clubs, it's going to be a bit of a nightmare. What do you guys think? It's like we were saying before, like before we came live, like, how do they say to one season ticket holder, you've got the right to come over another one? It, whatever happens, there's going to be people who are upset and feel like they've been unfairly treated. It's a hard decision to try and get this sorted, but I think overall, it's just going to... They'll have to they'll have to find a way. They want people back in the ground, people buying pints and stuff like that. And even if it's a reduced capacity, they're going to like, we'll, we'll take it. The, how they're going to do it, I have no idea. This is where the business side of the club really comes into play. And also, this is where we'll see the, how well a club is run from a business perspective of all clubs. Because this is the kind of thing where a, if you come from a business background, you should be able to deal with these situations that happened. And I do trust C- Susan Whelan, but I think we'll see a few clubs in the Premier League 
really balls this up, let's say. Yeah, and it'd be, it'd really, be really interesting to see if you, if you watch it from the TV point of view, because it'll look like people are sat in circles. Because, because they'll be missed rows, they'll be missed seats next to each other, and they're just like there's big circles in the ground. Um, so even at thirteen percent, that's only what, just over three and a half thousand. And yeah, and I remember when we played against was it Wigan in the cup, and we only had half the ground capacity. You could hear the crowd difference. So yeah. going from that down to thirteen or fifteen or whatever, it's definitely like a, min- a minority of the percentage is going to have a massive effect, but. We've gone from 100% to 0% in a matter of months. Yeah. So I think the fact that they're going to allow some people back in, it will just, I think it'll make the fans appreciate what they've missed and also the players and the manager as well. Yes. One thing that as well, I agree with that, Neil. One thing that I was saying to James before we came on live, uh, came live is how do you sort of, because I can't see there being any away fans, but is it then done on fans closest to the ground and stuff because you won't want like people traveling across the country and stuff and particularly for the bigger clubs they have season ticket holders say for example for united they'll have season ticket holders in london and stuff what's the difference between men say united were playing arsenal a season ticket holder from london for united going to the game and an away arsenal fan going to old trafford that's a good point, but the difference is, is that most are, most Man United fans are from London, so I'll get to that ground okay, no worries. I'm going to say, if, if, you, if you say that only fans within a 10-mile radius can go, United won't have any fans who might just fill their <laughs> way end. Um, <laughs> whereas every other club will probably be okay. I mean, we say it time and time again. Um, if, it's, if, it, if it's a 10-mile radius, we'll have zero away fans. Yeah, I don't, I don't, as Anne said, I don't think there'll be any away fans um, yeah. allowed until you're at full capacity. I think that'll be quite interesting, though, to hear like that. Just, I've never heard a crowd just one-sided. Like, I've never experienced that. So I think I'm going to try and get down to a game just to see how, and also the abuse will be heard a lot more, which is quite funny. But at the same time, um, the obviousness of if somebody's being... Some I don't know, saying something sexist or racist will just be, well, you're outside the ground and that'll be what, sometimes like a tenth the entire squad, inside a tenth of the entire fans like, right, get out now. Yeah, I think you're right. I think without the crowd there, there'll be, knowing our fans, there'll be people moaning, well, they shouldn't have gone because they don't see. Um, and that's the kind of argument we see when the ground's full, that you, you shouldn't be allowed to go unless you're loud. Um, yeah. So, so there'll be people moaning about that. Yeah, you're going to have to pick up every single person shouting They've, when someone's being abusive it's going to come out really loud do you think they'll introduce not vuzelas or something or some kind of like in like like a horn or something <laughs> yeah we've got like a clapper but like another way to create some kind of atmosphere with the lack of people because it's going to sound just like a it's going to sound like town when they've got the um like the choir singers that, that literally be the amount of people that are singing at one time yeah i've seen i've seen some things around the crowd noise they use now, they can put through the main tannoy system to make it look like it's louder. But it sounds, um, you, can, you can feel the difference. I think they, they tried to do it at West Ham and they got absolutely slated for it. So it's not a wise business decision to do that. Yeah, I just um, keep it as it is, see how it goes. Yeah, I agree. What do you think, Noel? Um, tannoys? I don't know. I wasn't a fan of them putting fake noises down the TV, to be honest. I think it felt really artificial and stuff. So, yeah. for me, I just think leave it with like the sound of the crowd and stuff. If it sounds a bit empty, so be it. It's sort of it's not ideal for anyone, but make of it what you can. Yeah, exactly. Um, one thing I did see going off topic last night is obviously the Champions League knockout stages are starting. But also the Champions League qualifiers have started on the same night. What, for the next year's competition? Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's um, obviously we're not in it, but it made me laugh. Um, right, guys, uh, everyone back next week? Yep, sounds good. We'll hopefully be with you with a full review of the Premier League. So I'm, I'm working with James and Ant together. We're doing that and hopefully I'll have some few special guests on that I think you'll really enjoy as well. So yeah, make sure to tune in next week because it will be a, be a good show. Thanks. I'll see you two next week. Brilliant. See you later. Bye.